Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Vessalatu vesselamu ala Resulillah. Ve ala ali ve sahbihi men vela. We are still talking about Surah Al-Fatiha. Um, yesterday we talked about the general theme of the surah. And again we we'll go back to the beginning of the surah. Of course it starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim even though it's not an ayah of the Fatiha but every surah starts with it and the Mus'haf starts with it as you as you know. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As you can see that this uh, verse uh, does mention uh, three names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah and Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. The name Allah <coughs> as we talked before means the one who is worthy of worship or the one who deserves to be worshipped the one who deserves to be sought after. People should seek Allah Azza wa for their needs. And the one who deserves to be loved uh, to the, uh, the, the, I mean, the perfect kind of love uh, to the limit. Um, so this name alone does entail an obligation on, on humanity. Uh, scholars say that Allah combined Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, right after the name Allah, so as to also give the impression to his, um, to his slaves that yes, he has a huge obligation on them to, uh, to, to worship him, to obey him and so on, based on the name Allah. But at the same time, there is a, a leniency from Allah Azza wa in holding people accountable uh, to, uh, towards these duties. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the combination of ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim coming immediately after Allah, this combination of these two names or three names give this kind of impression that yes, there's a huge obligation and responsibility on, on humanity, but Allah, when he holds people accountable, he deals with them mercifully, okay? Same meaning also applies when you read <coughs> Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Rahim. Rabbil Alameen, the, the master uh, of the worlds or the, uh, the Lord of the worlds, uh, means he created them, he owns them, he manages, manages, manages them, controls them, uh, controls their affairs, dispute, uh, di uh, disposes their affairs. Um, Rabbil Alameen. So if someone asks, so this kind of sovereignty of Allah and dominion, what kind of dominion is it? It is based on Rahmah as well. Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Rahim. Again, this uh, coming of Ar-Rahman Rahim after Rabbil Alameen gives uh, a human beings some form of uh, ease and tranquility and trust uh, in Allah's mercy that He will deal with them mercifully uh, in, uh, in this world and in the, here and in the next. <coughs> If you look at uh, Rabbil Alameen and you look at Maliki Yawm al -Din, Rabbil Alameen talks about the worlds that we live in right now. Maliki Yawm al -Din talks about the next world that people will go to. So mentioning these two worlds shows that Allah has the full dominion over this life and the life to come. If that is the case, if he is the one who deserves to be worshipped, if he is the one who has shown mercy to his creation, if he is the one who is in full control of this life and the life to come, it makes perfect sense that we worship him. That's why we say immediately after that, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. But since worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal cannot be attained without his help, no human being can actually do anything without the help of Allah. And the worship of Allah needs special help over on, on top of all this needs special kind of tawfiq and hidayah. Uh, that is why we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Ibadah is the goal. And the means to reach this goal is al-isti'ana. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ They go together. And you see that repeated in the Quran, such as, فَعْبُدْهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ فَعْبُدْهُ Worship him and rely on him to achieve this goal of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. And you can see the repetition of Iyaka and Iyaka. He could have said, Iyaka na'budu wa nasta'in. It would have been perfectly correct as well. Iyaka na'budu wa nasta'in would have been perfectly correct, but Allah chose to uh, word it as Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. 
scholars say that this could have uh, two important um, uh, 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 reasons. One of them is that to highlight the importance of ibadah and highlight the importance of istana. They are equally important. You cannot just focus on ibadah without istana. Yeah, both are very important. To worship Allah and to seek help from Allah are equally important to achieve your goals. That's why we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Equal. And also, uh, it shows, it has the repetition of إِيَّاكَ. إِيَّاكَ means you alone, you alone. So, um, uh, because uh, uh, the slave of Allah finds comfort and sweetness in dhikrullah, in mentioning Allah Azza wa Jal and repeating, repeating his, his mentioning. Um, the, the Surah Al-Fatiha starts with Alhamd. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamd, scholars say that uh, Alhamd uh, indicates uh, the conclusion of uh, prophethood and the conclusion of messages uh, sent to humanity. Um, um, if you read in the Quran, وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That's people in Jannah. The last thing they say is, الحمد لله رب العالمين. Um, Allah Azza wa Jal chose to start the last message with Alhamd and chose the last messenger, his names, Ahmed and Muhammad, are also from the same root of Alhamd. So the same root of Hamd um, uh, is used for the beginning of the book. And it's also uh, used uh, as um, the, uh, it is the root for the names of the Prophet uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him as well. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm al-Din. They say that Maliki Yawm al-Din or Maliki Yawm al-Din that comes after <coughs> Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, that is because some people when they hear repetition of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, it's repeated twice. At the beginning of the surah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and again ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, some people <coughs> may um, become um, uh, too lax in discharging their responsibility towards Allah Azza wa Jal, relying on Allah's rahmah. Uh, they say, oh, he's a Rahman ar-Rahim, he's not, I can do this and he won't, won't hold me accountable. So the coming of Maliki Yawm al-Din or Maliki Yawm al-Din right after ar-Rahman ar-Rahim prevents people from going to, into false hope and wishful thinking. That's a problem as well, to, go, to fall into wishful thinking and uh, neglect uh, Allah's commandments. That's a big problem. So uh, Malik Yawm al-Din coming after Rahman Rahim restricts people from falling into this, into this pitfall. So inshallah, we'll stop here for the tafsir. <clears throat> we have gone for seven minutes or so.